tiny 290 is the longest you've ever seen. Which was, where was the longest uh, whoop section that you ever ran in your, in your day, David? And let's see who wins the whole shot run right now. There's a red bike nosing out in front. Can Jeremy McGrath hold on to it? It's going wide, it looked like Lampson to me. It's Mike Brown, number nine. And Jeremy McGrath, number one. Kevin Windham is in third. And then Mike Craig, number 17. McGrath doesn't waste any time. Mike Brown coming into the sand, coming to the outside. Jeremy McGrath having a battle with the Honda Troy Rider, Mike Brown. Everybody making it through the sand okay as Brown takes the lead. And here comes number 28 on the run, Damon Bradshaw. Bradshaw, Bradshaw with a great start. He goes wherever he wants. And earlier he, earlier he said because of the track design, uh, perhaps because it's easier, he's going for the pass. Michael Craig is in third place. So two Honda of Troy bikes right up near the front. Yeah, he said because it was easier. Right in back of Craig. Here's Jeremy McGrath over the finish line in the number one spot, followed closely by Mike Brown. Good run for Damon Bradshaw so far, holding down at number four spot. Still staying in contact with the leaders, but the three front runners are all on Hondas. I don't know if that says anything about the way... Champion. Jeremy McGrath and the battle is between Bradshaw and Huffman with Phil Lawrence in second place right in front of Bradshaw Bradshaw's got a shot at Phil Lawrence in this last corner if Lawrence leaves the door open checkers fly when well, they introduced him over the PA was Brian or Damon Bradshaw there you see Skip Norfolk, the mechanic of Jeremy McGrath. To push everyone wide. We're from five to ten seconds from the gate dropping. The engines are revving. We're just about set for the 250 and they're off. Lamson got the best jump I've ever seen. Almost looked like he jumped the gate. It is a Team Honda. Lampson and McGrath with Ryan Hughes moving into second place, number five. Bradshaw, number 28. Michael Craig, number 17. Number 16 is Greg Albertine. As they head for the first triple, it's Jeremy McGrath following his teammate, Steve Lampson. They did this in Charlotte until the last lap. But, but out in front, you see it there. Steve Lampson, who went through so much frustration in the opening round, has trouble on the dragon back. And Jeremy McGrath, but Lampson fires back into the action. A side-by-side -side race. Team Honda out front. Jeremy gets the edge, holds the inside line. Jeremy McGrath has a big lead right now with Greg Albertine in second, but a battle is for third with Mike Craig. Associate Jeremy said it himself, that sand is so soft, he really was surprised. There's a replay of what happened to Lamps, and he's going for the inside, the front wheel tucked on him. And he actually ended up taking the turn into the dragon back. Our Honda stopwatch as we look for intervals, and of course the lap time. That battle for second place is still tight. Craig will not give up. Rocco jumps over Craig into third place. Oh, my goodness, just when Craig was putting a charge on, here comes Jeremy McGrath. He takes the checkered flag after a third place in the opening round. Michael Craig, number 17. A little pile of dirt under their rear tire, so they actually are kind of sitting on a on a ramp. So the back end is higher, and they can squirt off of there and try not to get the. Fifties here, but Anaheim, the biggest crowd of the season, 65,000 plus. Watch their race for the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath on the inside. What play with this? The third race of the season. Steve Lampson having a battle with Albertine for second place. Riders who have uh, had crashing problems. Emmy, Bradshaw, and then Albertine. Well, the way it looks right now as we watch Jeremy just making it look easy again for the third time in a row. He's got a pretty good lead over his teammate Lampson. It hasn't really grown or shrunk. It's stayed about the same, and I have a feeling that... Back to the leader, Jeremy McGrath. All-time winning a Supercross rider as we take a look at the top five. McGrath working his way through that rhythm section. He had actually a faster line through there in practice in the heat race, but I think the track's getting chewed up through there, and it's, why risk it? It's fast enough to do it that way. He can monitor, uh, look over his shoulder, get those signals from Skip Norfolk and find out how far uh, back his teammate is. And uh, game plan, he's starting to make time on Lampson. I don't know if that, that uh, injury from crashing in practice and Lampson is starting to wear on him or not, but... Definitely forces you to do the same. Jeremy McGrath and his mechanic Skip Norfolk. Jeremy looking down. And we're all set to go for the 250 minute event. It is Greg Albertine. Number 
the 16 crowd. on the Suzuki with McGrath to the end. Jeremy McGrath in 10th position right now. Oh, he's got a long ways to go. He still hasn't even come by our screen there. He just went by. Ezra Lusk. Lampson. McGrath is right behind Damon Huffman, who also got off to a bad start. This is a great opportunity because Ezra Lusk, then Greg Albertine, then Lampson. I don't think that, that Larry Ward is that intimidated by these guys. And he's already starting to pull this track, and he's got five or six guys all taking those best lines. Look at that. Three guys right in front of him. He's got nowhere left to go, but he makes the move around the outside of swing. Okay, Larry Ward, number six, number 30. Damn, we got a problem down here. With the number four is Steve Lampson. And look at Jeremy McGrath, number one. He got the whole shot, but faded with a crash. But he took a third in Anaheim. And his confidence is back up there as he runs in second position. And you know what? McGrath, who was behind Damon Huffman in the beginning, carved through the pack. And Damon Huffman is hitched to ride just as McGrath makes. So if McGrath goes to the lead, Huffman's going to be there, too. Here comes Jeremy. Leaping right by Ezra Lusk. And he's already starting to cut into that lead. Look how close he is behind Larry Ward. Larry Ward's been there before, and he cracked. But McGrath almost... Uh, moving to third. Jeremy McGrath now right on the bumper of Larry Ward. Only a matter of time, wouldn't you say, David Bailey? Well, at the, at the rate he's caught him, I would say so. Here he comes up the inside. The fans here at the Kingdom wanting to capture the situation themselves pictorially. The flash bulbs are popping all over. Ward did a brilliant move right there, not to let Jeremy cut back underneath him. He's got the inside. Jeremy McGrath is now our leader. And look at Damon Huffman also trying to sneak in to take second place. Well, both those so guys Jeremy jump McGrath, over. Damon Huffman, and he went out of the riders. Here comes Damon Huffman on Jeremy McGrath. This is going to be the first race. In 250 this year. Huffman putting the pressure on McGrath. That's something we haven't seen in years. Can McGrath withstand that kind of pressure? David Bailey, you've been saying all year long that Damon Huffman is the one rider that possibly could challenge Jeremy McGrath while he's getting his shot right now. We're seeing it right now. Look at Huffman through the whoop section. He's got a beautiful line putting the pressure on McGrath and McGrath bobbles. Damon Huffman. Huffman right on his heels. They're already right. starting to, they're pulling away now a little bit from Larry Ward, but no matter how you slice it, a beautiful performance by Larry Ward. So it's McGrath, Huffman, Ward, Lampson, and Lusk. Madley is right up front, right where it should be. For the first time this season, Jeremy McGrath, beyond the second lap of the race, has a challenge. Well, I think it's going to really get interesting when they catch up to the lap riders. Huffman has the speed all through the race. He's had the speed. At one point, he was a little further behind Jeremy, but now with the faster lines of the whoops. Here comes Damon Huffman out of the whoops to the outside. But Jeremy McGrath had a good angle. Huffman. Oh, my goodness, bar to bar. The crowd is going bananas. Little bobble there by Huffman, but he lets, he's letting Jeremy McGrath know he's got the speed to go up and run with him. And now play reward. Oh, I but, think definitely, and you can't blame him. But right now, Huffman goes by McGrath for the lead. And McGrath jumps right back out. We go to the whoops. They hippity hop through the first part of the whoops. And then the speed factor going into the corner. But Huffman with that outside line can double over the jump. McGrath knew it. He looked to his side. Huffman. Breaking into the corner now. Has the angle to take over the lead. This is the first rider, other than Jeremy McGrath, at this point in the race to lead a 250 main event this year. This could be the story, too. It looks like McGrath maybe shaking up a little bit. He can't believe it. It's happened a lot sooner than he thought. Huffman is able to use those long legs to get through that whoop section fast. Going into the triple. Bar to bar. McGrath retakes the lead. They're not far from the Lampers now, maybe four seconds away from Kyle Lewis. They're coming into that whoop section again, and watch Huffman right back by on the oh. long legs. I, I bet you these guys are getting tired, Art. They're starting to roll over that double. They're starting to cover each other's moves. They got a huge lead over third place Lampson. McGrath was given the inside, and he took it. Plays any factor in this. 
Okay, into the Big Dipper. It's Jeremy McGrath. But Huffman is not letting him off the hook. Kyle Lewis gets out of the way wisely. Oh, Huffman stole! Oh, he stole his bike. That gives McGrath a huge lead now. I was about to say, Art, that if Huffman can just stay there and apply that pressure, not far to go now before he takes that checkered flag. Jeremy McGrath! His fourth consecutive victory. Luskin Point. Our unofficial count has Pashone in fifth. Emig, Hughes, Ward, and Craig. That's our unofficial count as they come across. Okay, I'm down here with Jeremy McGrath. Jeremy, were you surprised when Huffman came up like that? Well, I was definitely surprised. I didn't think someone would be on my tail so much like that. I was coming through the pack. I had some good lines over here in the corner. And I think Gaiman saw a lot of my lines, and he just stayed right on my tail. And then when I got in front, kind of relaxed a little. And he made me nervous a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he's coming up. He's, he's good. I just, I just think I was a little bit maybe nervous after I got in front. I don't know. Does it remind you of Jeremy McGrath in 1993 coming off a couple 125 titles? Yeah, Damon's, he's definitely, um, you know, the one that's going to be the champ. If I'm not, I, I, he's, riding, he's riding really good, and, and uh, he reminds me a lot of myself. Stoke, was that your best 250 ride yet or what? Oh, yeah, by far. You know, this one, uh, you know, even top Anaheim, man. You know, I finally got to race with him. You know, he's always up in the front, and I'm always coming from behind, but... Today we got we both got bad starts and I just rode with them and rode smart and it was pretty cool. It's gone halfway. They're revving it high. They're off and McGrath with a great start. Larry Ward to the outside, number six. Number nine is Mike Brown. Guys, you can already see right there behind him in that corner, all three of those guys blocked each other out. Already opened up a huge lead for Jeremy McGrath. He's got about three seconds now. So we might as well just go back to the battle for second place because that's where the fight is. Doing all the jumps out of the turn as he whips through the whoop section right now with a substantial lead. Always made me nervous. No one's making Jeremy <laughs> nervous. He has nothing to worry about out front. Look at him. He's jumping all the way into that step section and all the way out. The only guy that can do it. He learned from Ebbing and Emig in the heat race. Huffman went down. Pleasure Jeremy McGrath is out in front, number one, with a big lead. Emig in second, Craig in third. Hughes has now moved into fourth with Brown and Lusk in that order. Well, if you look at Jeremy, he's running a real smooth line. He's taking his time. He's watching what everybody else is doing. He's pacing himself off of that. Someone gets a little closer, he picks it up. If somebody falls back, he turns the throttle down a little bit. So right now, he's in control. Let's go to Davey. I'm down here with Skip Norfolk. Skip, how important was it to Jeremy to reestablish his dominance tonight? Well, it's real important. You know, I, we were changing some things. Uh, we were a little slow in practice, trying to make up for it. Made, ended up making him uncomfortable. I mean, this guy's amazing. We go back to what he knows, what he's comfortable with, and he's ripping off laps like this. It's, you know, my hat's off to him. The guy's incredible. We had his head all screwed up earlier, and he put it back on and was out there hammering on him. Back to our leader, Jeremy McGrath, as we follow him on the last lap. Over the triple, only a few feet to go as he takes a look at the checkers for his fifth consecutive victory. He won in Orlando. In the main event as a privateer in both the 125 and 250. They're the eyes. Clear that he has the maturity to put up with somebody like Emig cutting him off everywhere. Okay, it's sideways and they're off. Jeremy McGrath not getting the good start. It's Jeff Emig number two and another Kawasaki of Ryan Hughes number five. Watching for third though. And it's a one, two, three, four event through the sand. McGrath cutting to the inside on Ryan Hughes. Moves into third, but Ryan jumps him now. Here's the triple. They all take the triple. In practice, Jeremy McGrath moving by Michael Craig into third as they go into the whoop section. Jeremy having a little bit more trouble than the Kawasaki's out front. Well, I think the only rider on the racetrack that's got the speed of McGrath has got to be Hughes. If he can get around his teammate, that'd be a big plus. Behind LaRocco. We're looking out front right now. Emig, Jeremy McGrath taking second place with a battle. Ryan Hughes will not give up easily, however. You know what, though? This is the first time this year, Art, that I, that I can think of where these two riders have been side by side in the first lap. Hughes has a great opportunity right here to do what Huffman did in Seattle. Watch everything McGrath does, follow his every move, and keep the pressure on. Oh, this is going to be a great three-way battle, we hope, as Emig now, and that straightaway gets some speed. McGrath through the triple, Jeremy to the inside. Oh, my goodness, what a battle as Hughes comes back on him. It's out in front, Jeff Emig. Jeremy McGrath having a lot of fight in him. Well, he's going to have to tonight. Number five.
Jeff Emming is in first. McGrath second. Hughes third. Craig fourth. Lampson fifth. LaRocco sixth. Huffman seventh. And Lusk is in eighth position. Dyson it for a second there that, that we saw Emig in the, uh, the heat race. Here they go into the triple. Jeremy McGrath gets cut off at the hay bale by Emig. Oh. Uh, he carries the front wheel over one bump more than everybody else. He lets the back tire skip and he hops one more. That's a faster rhythm through there and it also takes less energy. He's able to do the same every lap. Emig cutting him off once again, but look out for the triple. Let's check it out. This is going to be close. Jeremy McGrath to the cheer of the fans to the inside takes over his first lead of the race, but Emig coming right back. Jeremy shut him down. Well, that's the same place that he kept passing Hughes, and uh, finally he just pushed Emick Watt. Ryan Hughes, Kawasaki teammates. You see them behind the number one red bike, the Honda of Jeremy McGrath. It is Lampson right behind the million bucks right now. Just focus. He's in the horseshoe turn. He sees the checkers in sight. Finish line jump. Jeremy McGrath goes to of the sport. We'll be right back with words from Jeremy McGrath. To Damon Bradshaw, and once again, Skip Norfolk with words of wisdom, words to fire him up, whatever he thinks he needs at the time, he'll be screaming into Jeremy's ear right before the start of the... Can Jeremy take eight in a row after breaking the record at seven? Oh, what a pack. Ezra Lusk breaking out in front. Number 34, cutting to the inside, though, is Jeff Emig, number two. It'll be Emig with the lead. Jeremy McGrath in third. And the race is on. Down early battle going on with number two out in front of number one. Oh, I can't believe how slick McGrath was. He went into the first corner, buried in the pack, snuck around the inside, passed everybody in the whoops, and already we're looking at a replay of last year. Jeremy McGrath taking a quick lead as he goes up the stair steps and goes into that other triple on the far side. Really come on strong. And Damon Huffman is right behind him as they go across to finish the first lap of action. This is a 20-lap main event. They did that first lap in about a minute. Jeremy McGrath to the inside. Can he box him out? McGrath taking it back again. Here comes Emig. Oh, my goodness. Emig to the inside. Gets him on the box. Oh, boy. Emig is asking for it. Over the quad. Oh, they both hit hard on that quad. He almost went off onto the cement. Now he's hit third. This Watch is just, This is just how it was in Atlanta. I was starting to say, Art. Oh, the crowd is on their feet. They can't sit down. Emig making the turn on the straightaway now with Jeremy McGrath in second. Yeah, for 20 laps. You know, it looks like Hughes is in good position, too, uh, David. Well, he's, he's making up time, He's Mark. sucking up right underneath there to Jeremy McGrath. And if anything should happen to either of the front runners, he is right there. Yeah, and so is Damon Huffman. All these guys are really close. Lusk rode so good in that heat race. He's got the speed. He's not holding anybody up. And Lusk is inside. Jeremy McGrath on the outside. Hughes will help his cause. That's a teammate move. Jeff wow. Emig getting a little breathing space in first place now with a great box out by Ryan Hughes. Now Ryan did a beautiful move right there, and I don't think he did it totally intentional, but he almost took Jeremy down. Jeremy did a good job. His legs aren't long enough to reach the ground. That's concerned about what's going on out here. Oh, yeah, you know, we've been out front. Ezra Lusk has taken it over. Took them both out. Damon Huffman is in third. Ezra Lusk battling with Jeremy McGrath. McGrath going to the inside. He will take the lead away from Ezra Lusk. But right there is Damon Huffman. He collides with Ezra, taking over second place. A great opportunity right here, Art. Yeah, it's only a matter of time now as Jeremy McGrath pulls away. Can Damon Huffman, though, pick up and match that battle he did in Seattle? Absolutely. Wait till you see when they come to that long whoop section. Damon Huffman is going through that. looks like a gear higher. If he Hold on. With 13 laps remaining to win his eighth straight Supercross. He's got Damon Huffman behind him a couple of seconds. Behind Damon Huffman, another Kawasaki and Ryan Hughes, who is two seconds in back of Huffman. Well, you know what happened as we uh, broke away? Damon Huffman made a big mistake going through the whoop de doo section. He had a lot of momentum. Jeremy McGrath. And Damon Huffman now comes in. We're ready to go. Larry Ward, number six, on the outside is Ezra Lusk. Ezra Lusk, Yogi with the lead out of turn one. It's then Larry Ward, Ezra Lusk, Jeff Emig, Phil Lawrence. 
but it's Damon Hoffman. Michael Craig, more bad luck, stalls out in the far turn as Jeremy McGrath hits the monster triple with Larry Ward right behind him. And the guys that we would expect to get up there and challenge Jeremy, the guys that have been putting the pressure on this year, Emig and Hughes. Emig is in fourth, and Hughes about seventh or eighth right now. McGrath will have the probably... He's already been opening it up at about a half a second a lap. You can bet that's going to be even bigger. McGrath into that dangerous corner. Second lead now. About a second a lap he's gaining on Larry Ward. It stayed the same there for a while. But I think right now Larry Ward's a little bit more concerned with Lust than he is with McGrath. McGrath making it look easy as we take a look at the Honda stopwatch to check out the interval. As we come out of these whoops, we'll check it for you. Larry Ward at 7-3. McGrath jumping completely over that tabletop jump, still on the final lap. Jeremy McGrath would become the first rider and has become the first rider. It looked like Emmy in fifth, then Lawrence in sixth, with Huffman coming up the seventh. Good start, and McGrath is uh, maybe fourth or fifth, or maybe even further back in the pack. There he is right there, filling with his goggles, getting those last right next to him. Five to ten seconds, and we'll be underway here from the RCA Dome. Who gets the break? On the inside is Doug Henry, number 15. Jeremy McGrath tries to cut inside. Doug Henry is our leader with Hemig in second. Lusk in third, Jimmy Button in fourth. Oh, Doug Henry is gone. He's got a huge lead. They're right in front of him. Bradshaw, Hughes, Emick, all those guys are ahead of him. And Doug Henry, who's been riding so good lately, look at him jump that finish line jump. He's got a clear track. Make it tough. Button is not letting him get away. Here's Emick making the rush for the lead. Jeff Emig takes over the lead from Doug Henry. Here comes Ezra Lusk on the inside. Well, Ed used to battle was one of the toughest guys in the world to pass. Kind of developed sort of a bad name. These riders slow up Jeremy, but look at Jeremy Brown on the inside of David Bradshaw. He boxes him out with a great move. That's he the only way to pass out here. This track is fairly simple in a design, and the only way to get around is to get physical like that, and McGrath pulled it off. A bit about him. That'll slow uh, McGrath's pace down, but look at him. He's already around Henry, too. Pull and tear off. Everything is working perfect for this guy. He carves through the pack like no one I've ever seen. The racetrack, but he's got a couple of spots here and there where he makes mistakes, just like right there. What a move by Jeremy McGrath, just waiting for the right time. That one second lap earlier. Oh, this is going to be a great finish. We anticipate another one from Indianapolis as Jeremy McGrath has to battle from behind. We'll be back with the final action after these one goes. Bananas is down is Jeff Emig. Oh, my goodness. Emig looked like he got cross-rutted, David. Oh, Jeff Emig goes into that deep run, as you said. Front wheel went over the berm as he came into there. He went over that little bit of a hump as they started the corner. His back in kind of hopped, went around to the inside a little bit because of the lap riders. And as the track gets more beat up, uh, these riders start to make mistakes here and there. I like what Jeremy just did. He went over that berm purposely, went just to the outside of it. That way he could get, you know, eliminate any kind of problem like what Emig had a lap before. Lost all these guys. Emig was ahead of him. The Ryan crowd Hughes. is standing Ooh. as Jeremy McGrath. Not taking any chances on that triple with a knack-knack. Tucker's in sight. He has won 10 in a row, equaling his previous record of 10 victories on a season in 1993 and 10 more in 95. And he set 1993 and 95 with 10 wins. Win his 11th of the season. He got pinched off. It's Emig number two with the best angle. Okay, the scene is set now for a tremendous race. How is Jeremy McGrath going to get by the three other fastest riders in recent races? He's got Lusk as his first target as they finish lap number one. Oh, what a pass. Nice move by Hughes to hold on to second place against Ezra Lusk. Here comes Jeremy McGrath. McGrath cuts off the Suzuki rider and moves into third as the crowd is really with him. Well, is that, in that battle with Lusk, Hughes... Uh, took the speed out of Lusk. He wasn't able to come into that triple. Cased it hard. McGrath not following. Put himself in the right place. He could have been following and he would have paid the price there. Okay, now just like a race we remember, here comes Jeremy McGrath. Cuts inside Ryan Hughes. He is quickly in the second place. 
This guy is so amazing and so sneaky. Hughes had no idea he was that close. As they go to the finish line jump, isn't quite ready to take him, but it could happen any time. Let's go down. Oh, wait. Jimmy McGrath, a pass on the same corner that he passed Hughes. Here comes Emig right back. Emig gets caught up in the hay bale. He goes down, and Jeremy McGrath looks behind to see just what happened. McGrath is in first. A second place in Dallas and a third place in Houston and a fourth place as we go to the replay. Emig just tried to get back in there and cut him off. The hay bale hooked up on his motorcycle, and as he tried to go, he had nowhere to put his foot. Went down. And Jeremy McGrath, meanwhile, heads to the finish line jump, ready to lap his first rider, Kyle Lewis, who is just in very, uh, quite a bit of pain. He's been bounced around a lot lately. Yeah, McGrath, but can he do it for 20 laps? I have no idea. McGrath, two seconds ahead of Ryan Hughes. Let's go down to Marty. Guys, one of the things that's interesting on Jeremy's bike, I talked to Skip Norfolk right before the start. He said he taped up the air duct. We have a threat of rain. They were worried that it would be very costly if it got wet. Now, that would have a bit of an effect on horsepower, but uh, so far, you'd have a tough time convincing me it's hurting Jeremy McGrath. On to that lead, and no mistakes from this guy. Should Hughes hold on, it would also equal his best finish of the year, the second place in Dallas. Look at the smoothness on those wicked whoops. You know, when he does make a little mistake, he doesn't lose much time. Uh, you know, I say no mistakes. I mean no major mistakes. Nothing that, uh, like Emig. You know, he had a chance to get up there and run with Jeremy and try to make it all happen in the first couple of laps and went down. AMA to officially get those points to see how far down it takes for Jeremy uh, and the other riders to uh, wrap up this crime. The main gate, main event gate, he has won. 17 races in a row without losing, counting motor with career win. And a Superman over the finish line and jump. How fitting is that? Position. I believe he Now, what will be interesting yeah. to find out is where Emick finished. He might uh, still be hanging on to it by the skin of his teeth. Around the track. I used to like to do that, so I didn't have to sit on the starting line like McGrath is right here and get nervous for that long. I like to be the last guy there, so when I got there, they put the... Okay, they're revving now. Let's see who can get the whole shot. Jeremy McGrath got a very poor start for him. Ezra Lusk, 34, is out in front. McGrath is buried at about 8. 15 to the inside, and it's Hughes, number 5. Well, and this is ugly for Jeremy McGrath because Henry, who won his heat race, I was so impressed with, looks like he might go into the lead here. He got around Hughes. Hughes was fast in the heat race as well. Ezra Lusk, number 34, since Daytona. Three fourth-place finishes, but here comes Ryan Hughes making the pass where many passes by the good riders have been made. Rapp gets by Henry. He wants by Lawrence, and he has moved into third, believe it or not. He passed both those guys in the same corner and moves into third. Now he's behind this battle right here. That corner had a lot of momentum. He's lost just a little bit of time in McGrath. See McGrath right there? Oops. The Hughes jumping it just about like Jeremy does. Yeah, he's going faster there. I think actually Art, Jeremy's learning from Hughes through there. Jeremy McGrath gets cut off on the inside. Oh! oh! Ryan Hughes buckled him. Just went in there and did that kind of on purpose, just kind of having fun with Hughes right now, and Hughes did a good job keeping his composure. Where the bar into the whoop section before the corkscrew. Jeremy backing down a little bit. Their feet watching this battle between Ryan Hughes, number five, and Jeremy McGrath. What an opportunity for Hughes to get out there and run with probably the best motocross rider and supercross rider ever. Before they go into the rocker. You know, I think there's a lot of respect between these two guys, and sometimes you see uh, McGrath and Emick in some of these battles, and you'll see Emick, you know, going all the way across the track and cutting them off, trying to protect his line, and I don't think you'll see that from Hughes. Hughes is a fighter, but he won't do anything uh, dirty like that, where, which we've seen occasionally from Emmett. ...up to be better against him, and he said, Ryan Hughes has figured it out, but here goes Jeremy McGrath. Oh, what a move. One mistake from Hughes. He came out of the corner, couldn't get over that double. That's all it took. And uh, he, he really didn't even need to be here. We used to see Hannah do that. On the stopwatch as we check out the interval now. Yeah, see, there's a good 5-5. Five, five. He's beat. Here comes McGrath. Win number 12. Jeremy McGrath. Look at that. Be right back to hear from the champion as you see him waving to the crowd here in the silver dome 
Congratulations by Jeff Emig. We'll be back hearing from Jeremy in a moment. Thank you, Jeremy. This is for you. Uh, the AMA has a 70-year history in racing. You're going to go down as one of the greats of all time. 12 in a row this year, four championships, and you're one of the greats. And we thank you for what you've done for our sport. Thanks, Tom. You know, I, I, sh I mean, I can't even believe it. You know, me and Skip here, we, we're living a dream, and we got to be the luckiest people there are. And uh, thanks to AMA, you know, it's all been possible. And uh, you know, without you guys, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Went out and kind of took it real easy and made sure he rode through that rut perfectly straight so when he gets out over the gate he get a good start. I noticed with the 12 victories he's got V12 on the back of his yeah. pants. Steve Lampson an injury. Okay and they start to rev up now. Can Jeremy get a good start in the muck that we saw Marty Reed in. He stays pretty straight. It's Jeremy McGrath out in front. Cuts off Mike Brown. Larry Ward is also there number six. Mike Brown number nine though as Jeremy looks back to Brown and just takes off like a rocket down the straightaway. Well, here we go again. You know, Jeremy, the guy has no flaws. He killed him in the qualifier. Got a great start here in the main event. So if he makes a mistake, which it's very rare that he does, that's when we're going to see the race. At everything that he's doing, he's very fluid, not getting too excited if his wheel pops out of a rut or anything like that. He just flows with it, and, he, and he's concerned about the lap riders and everything on the track. Rick, Jeremy is so balanced. Uh, you know, there would be some people with tremendous confidence that Jeremy has step over that line well, and maybe, maybe accidentally ride a little bit over the edge. Well, when you start winning as much as he has, which no one's felt that except him, you know, I've had my streak, and David has had, had, had his streak as well. Sometimes you think you can do anything, but I think the key to Jeremy's success is not just his riding, it's the balance of his life. He likes to have fun, he likes to ride, he likes to train, but he, do he doesn't overdo it in any one area. Skip Norfolk is Mike. Tell him to look out for those big bumps for the whoop-de-doo section. There's a few big ones in there, and if you can hop over those, you can keep that bike pretty flat. Hey, you got Honda Troy beside you? You got Team Yamaha down from them, and you know who's sitting on your right. Okay, you know where you got to be when the gate drops. Forget about the heat race. You need a whole shot, four laps of your race, and then you'll be out front. You can do whatever you want then. All right? Hammer on these guys. 20 laps this time. Boy, oh, that's great. So we're set. They're revving up. The gate will drop any second. Now it's gone. Jeremy gets a terrible jump out of the gate. Emig, good job. Lusk, a good job. McGrath is about in 10th position right now, but he, then he shoots by four riders already in 5th position. And look how smart Jeremy is. Up the inside to the woods, already around LaRocco. He's in, what, 4th maybe, 5th? I can't believe what this guy can do. He's got some fast guys ahead of him. LaRocco won his semi. He's already... Around. Sharp elbow that time on Lusk. Yeah, he gave it. Coming up from Kansas City. He wants to hold on to that lead. So now these guys are using pretty much the same line. You can see uh, Emig's mechanic, Jeremy, looking on. McGrath is able to start using different lines. He's got nothing to lose, really. He can just watch what these guys do and play off of them. Patient right here. Time is going to run out uh, if he can't stay close. He's got to stay really close to these guys, or else they're not going to feel that presence anymore. Oh, LaRocco can sense his first victory of the 96 season. Now, this section coming up, Morocco's been using the inside and off the corner. And he cuts in front of Morocco. Jeremy McGraw brings the crowd to their feet. Holy mackerel. We're in St. Louis, aren't we? I can say that. Harry Carey. <laughs> Look at LaRocco. He's got an excellent line coming off of that section. He gets Jeremy back briefly. Bird to bar. McGrath takes the advantage of the triple. LaRocco, he gets the block pass. Oh, what great infighting. Keep it upright. You can, I can tell you he's a little irritated with that. He's not going to let these guys boss him around much more. Fender defender. Here comes Jeremy again. This is the last lap where uh, LaRocco, watch what he does right here. He jumps all the way off. Laps remaining in this 250 main. Oh, look at the move. LaRocco and Emmy going at it now. Coming through the whoops. Great move by LaRocco to the inside. And then the double jump by Emmy to retake the lead. Look it out now. As they come over the finish line, jump. Morocco right there. Emick looks over. He knows it. Jeremy using that outside still, but he's not nearly close enough like he was in the past few laps to get in there and make a move. Now watch, watch Morocco through this section. He'll wheelie the front wheel and hop over there. 
But Emig has the angle. No contact, just a good block pass. Around LaRocco, though, off the inside again. Now Emig, oh, LaRocco bumps and comes off the bike. Jeremy McGrath leaps by him. I don't think the lap times really matter right now. It's just positioning. Breezing by the lappers. Cliff Palmer, Jeremy McGrath right on the tail of Jeff Emig. Now look at this, McGrath all the way on the inside. They pass up Todd to Hoop. We're going to have a great battle oh. here as Jeremy McGrath almost took off himself. Toll on Jeremy, on uh, Jeff White Emig. flag lap. One lap to go. Can Emig do it? He's got a good, comfortable lead right now. Unless Jeremy can stay closer than this, Emig's got the composure to hold on to it. Emig is one win in Supercross history. Was Las Vegas. McGrath was not in the field. Lawrence for the heat race. I'll tell you, the fans are all out of their seats with good reason. Emig leading Jeremy McGrath in the final lap. Here's the second to the last turn. Emig, flawless. McGrath is not close enough to make a move on the final turn. It is Jeff Emig. I don't believe it, Art. I don't think Emick does either. He jumped about 10 feet past the landing of that finish line jump, hands in the air. His first legitimate Supercross win, I think, in his heart, because Jeremy McGrath was not in the field in Las Vegas. And what are you doing? In an eight-lap race, that's about a second a lap, so if he gets the whole shot, it could be all over. The light brown eyes of Jeremy McGrath as he peers over his shoulder. He's getting his mechanic. And the fireworks go off. <laughs> Was this planned? <laughs> hey! Emmick's right beside you. You know where you gotta be when this day drops, okay? Emmick, Russ, Bill, and then uh, Henry, all the way down. 20 laps. St. Louis was a fluke. Let him know it, alright? These guys came here to see you win. Doesn't he? It really is. Well, that's what he is. Yeah. And, he, and they make such a great combination because he can read Jeremy so well. Ten seconds. The riders are ready. They're revving up their machines, and they're off. Jeremy McGrath, whole shot. They round the second turn. Ezra Lusk in a great position. Doug Henry in fourth. Emig is in fifth behind Henry. And then a pack of riders, including Stevenson, Lawrence, LaRocco, and Ward. That he fell into the hay bales there. He got a little protection from him. And here's our leader, Jeremy McGrath. No problems through the whoop section. Nice timing. Gasses it off the back side of that finish line jump. Over the double. Floating through the whoops. The guy's perfect. I, you know, I can't... I could follow him around for an hour and try to find a mistake, and he just won't. Emig was able to beat him in St. Louis, but if he comes around, as Ward was in the far part of the picture, as McGrath just breezes along. McGrath is uh, we're on a different side of the stadium as Larry Ward right now. Just a huge lead. Look back behind him. He can't see anybody. Lusk is he's not losing a lot of time, but a second a lap adds up quick when you're seven, eight laps into the race. You know, you think uh, Jeremy McGrath coming into this race, David Bailey, with a 100 time. So he's just keeping it on two wheels and thinking about the outdoors. Jeremy's throwing it sideways. Here comes another triple. And the neck neck. Wow, what and a the, great shot. And the crowd is going crazy. The checkers. And for Jeremy. 15 for McGrath, pretty amazing. Jeremy McGrath, his 14th win in 15 races. Went. What a start, what a finish. 14 out of 15, probably a record that, well, can you even break it? Well, there's only uh, can't you can't find out till next year, I guess. <laughs> I'd like to think I can beat it, but man, I, I gotta be the luckiest guy in the world, you know? Honda gives me 100% effort and uh, my family, my friends, and especially my mechanics, Skip Mor Norfolk, and uh, you know, it's just great to have a crew like we got. You know, every week we come out 100% and full force, and uh, if I do my job, then most likely I'll be up here. What was the secret tonight? I mean, you came firing off the line and you just stretched the lead all night long. Well, you know, uh, I mean, as the season rolled on, you know, from all the wins and the pressure builds up, you know, it's not something I can feel until I end up losing the race. But.
tonight was just like the first race of a new series, and, and uh, I felt excellent. So relaxed out there, and uh, everything was perfect. Well, it's nice to know that you're human. Congratulations. This was a great year. Thanks for taking us along for the ride. Hey, thanks a lot, man. I'd like to thank all the fans out there for sticking with us, you know, and uh, especially Pace Motorsports and uh, all you guys for sticking with us. Well, there he is, Jeremy McGrath, your champion again, four times in a row. And let's hey, uh, congrats! We got to talk to you. I mean, after all, you're the man that made all these wrenches turn, and uh, this thing's putting out some nice heat right now. It got cold out here, that wind whipping up. Congratulations on a great year, Skip. Well, thanks. I, uh, you know, I can't say I've done it all without my, myself. I mean, there's uh, there's guys back at Honda that put in just as much effort into this motorcycle as I do, and, and Jeremy does. Uh, Tom Job. Machinist back at Honda, and that guy's incredible. We can weld Jello. I mean, he's that good. He'll do anything, he'll make anything. Between him and Cliff White and uh, Brad, our parts guy, I mean, it's it's a solid team effort. I mean, if it wasn't for the guys back in the shop doing their job, I couldn't do my job, and Jeremy couldn't do his job. It's just it's just it's a big team effort. You know the staggering statistic, guys, on this. He has now won with this guy's help and everybody on the team. 72% of his Supercross starts. That's phenomenal. The celebration continues with Jerry McGrath and uh, Emig and Ezra Lusk down below us. Uh, the sport uh, certainly does have now a man.